Hello, here is Moon and in front of me is the biggest lock in my collection. It is a Italian made Motura with quite long and cryptic name. It is a five point deadbolt. There are three here and two additional point there that would go on top and bottom of the door. And it has two pump locking cylinders on interior and exterior side, both working nicely. Moving bolt one way and the other, moving the, the latch. Oh, I must have reassembled it not very nicely last time, so it doesn't work properly, but yeah. Anyways, just to give the sense of scale, here is American Lock 1100. Here is typical uh, US made mortise cylinder. And here is a Euro profile cylinder. You see, this one is way, way bigger. Uh, it weights close to two kilograms, just a few grams below that without the keys and over two kilograms with the keys. Um, in pounds, it's like four and a half pounds, I think. So two things I want to show is what is inside of that, how to get to the cylinders, um, how do the parts operate and interact with each other. And I will also got one of the cylinders. They're both identical except for the external features. The exterior one has this drill protection spinner, which is a few millimeters thick. And this also drill protection shroud that as far as I'm aware can be removed. So let's see what's inside. Oh yeah. And here is the latch again. So let's see. Here, this cylinder cannot be removed from the front plate um, because of the drill protection. The guts can be removed when the C clip is out. So it can be gutted, but stays with the plate. You see, when we insert the key, there's this middle pin uh, gets pushed in and interacts with the cam and operates all those nice mechanics. Um, right. So what do we have here? Let me insert the key from the other side, uh, hopefully without losing everything in the process and show how it operates. So when we insert the key, the sidebar in the cylinder gets depressed. We can turn everything and you see the turning cam moves the deadbolt. And if we move it other way around, it moves the latch as well, which would be operated by the handle manually if these are retracted. So let's take all that away and get to the most interesting part, to the deadbolt. Um, I mean to the cylinder, of course. So plenty of, well, actually not that many, few parts. Huge, huge deadbolt part. Um, another cam. And the interior cylinder. Let's take that away. And that's the one I would like to gut because I would not have to deal with the C clip. And the guts are 
identical interior and exterior. Exterior for the picking would be probably harder just due to the fact that spinner is in the way of tensioning this lock. Um, yeah, so here you have the housing with the latch still attached. And here is the interior cylinder compared to the exterior one. So you see for exterior it just recessed further down and tensioning this lock is um, one of the challenges so it will be harder for that one. Otherwise the picking should be same. So to show how it works let me again insert the key and show that that this middle thingy retracts and you can see there I hope I can get the lighting right. There is a sidebar on this side. When we push that down, it can get retracted and the core can then turn in the housing. Let's take it out and have a closer look. So there is nothing nothing much in here, just a round cylinder with a groove for the sidebar on that side. The other one is the same. And here is where the magic happens. So that's, that's the sidebar. And I will show later how it interacts with the sliders. And there inside we can see the sliders um, and the spacers between them. When we insert the key, the grooves in the sliders arrange with the sidebar and it can be retracted. Interesting thing is that there is only one spring for all of them. Let's take this away. So here is the sidebar, housing, keys. And here is the clip holding it all together. And here is one spring for all of it. Um, this clip, apart from holding the spring compressed and holding the sidebar and its groove here, it also holds, uh, sorry for that, but we don't need it anymore right now. It also holds the spacers down so that when the key is operated, let me show that. Let me just hold it somehow by hand. When we insert the key, one slider moves first all the time and moves away this plunger and by moving it it also removes the spring tension from rest of the sliders and I will show you later it also has a bit different shape so the rest of the sliders are unsprung and the way it works is that the spacers are held back, they cannot move and the rest of the sliders are just being held by the friction. Uh, on the sides there are two springs that compress all this packet together. 
So let me show every single one of them. For that, I will remove the front cover, which only function is to, well, to guide the key. It has this notch to make sure the key is inserted the right way. And then when we turn it, well, it's actually not this part that holds the key, but the other one. So yeah, just guiding the key. Let's now take all that out and show every single one of them. Packet out. Here is the housing of well, housing of the core, whatever you want to call it. Let's put it here and the spring here, and the sideboard there, and this here, so that we have plenty of space for everything else. Okay, so here is the first spring. Then on the bottom we have the sliders, here we have the spacers, and at the end there comes the last spring. So looking at the springs, they're just a bit bent pieces of metal, so when it's all compressed they hold it all together. The spacers are just flat pieces of metal with some texture to them to increase the friction. And here are the sliders. The position of the uh, cutout defines the bitting. And one of them is a bit different. First, the shape of the cutout is a bit different. In order to press the slider, uh, the the sidebar back better, and it will also affect picking. And part of from that, it is also thicker, so it will always bind first, press the spring down, and then the rest come into play. So, yeah, that's. Pretty much it. Let me show it close up once more. Here are all the active sliders, the spacers, the springs. And now let's just put it back together and see that it still works. Not everything, just the core but I just want to show that it is not so hard to reassemble it. Okay, here we go. Just hold it all together. Stick it in here, slide the whole thing in, make sure it's aligned on one side, 
And on the other side. And we can now just push them in. Here comes the front plate. I hope I'm putting it back the right way, but if not, there are not so many combinations possible. Okay, let's make sure we put it in the right order. Which I hope we did. And I think this is misaligned now. Yeah, of course, I put it the wrong way around. And yeah, better the cap than the sliders because <laughs> When the sliders are put the wrong way around, that's obviously more work to fix. All right. just hold back the spacers with the finger and show that all the cutouts align nicely. That's where the sidebar would jump in. And one thing I didn't show yet is that the sidebar has also one edge rounded. So first I guess it's easier to manufacture that way. And second is it will obviously act tapered with the sliders. Yeah. So the rest is okay. The sidebar actually goes in as the last piece. Here is the plunger, the spring, which is extremely strong. It's um, you can see it in a monitor darkest video who picked it first publicly um, it really requires heavy tension and makes it not easy to pick the sliders and since they are mostly unsprung they are of course easy to overset regardless of there being no false gates. All right, so that's the cylinder back together, or at least its core. Let's see. And the sidebar is in. can be turned and operated. With that, thank you very much for watching and enjoy the rest of your day. Bye.